This video is designed to accompany the protocol Panel Optimization for High Dimensional Immunophenotyping Assays Using Full Spectrum Flow Cytometry. This is video 6, which follows Basic Protocol 4, Assessment of Data Quality Using Expert Gating and Dimensionality Reduction Algorithms. So I have opened my fully stained unmixed sample in an FCS file analysis software. You can use any that you like. Today I'm using Flojo 10. And this protocol just runs through using a gating strategy to check that your unmixing has worked as expected and then using a dimensionality reduction tool uh, to do a secondary check. So of course the first thing that we have to do is clean up our data. So we want to look at our time gate first to make sure that everything is recorded during stable flow and that we're only capturing uh, events that were recorded then. Um, so we've placed a time gate. If we drill down from this, we of course want to do our singlet gating. So we've put forward scatter height versus forward scatter area and taken only the events on the 45 degree diagonal. From here, we have moved down to do our singlet gating based on side scatter, height versus area, and again, only taking the diagonal population. The scaling is a little strange here, which is why it's not nicely on the diagonal. Then we gate on our live cells, so our viability negative, and forward scatter high non-debris cells sitting here. Then our cells of interest. So again, this panel is only looking at T cells, so our cells of interest are our lymphocytes. Moving down from this, your gating strategy, of course, depends on your panel and your experimental question. But for our gating strategy, this is what we have. And basically you just want to go through and checking all the markers uh, that you would expect to see on the cell types that you would expect. And you just want to keep an eye out for any unexpected combinations that uh, could crop up and show unmixing error or something wrong with your data. For example, this panel was run on PBMCs. So looking at the CD3 versus CD19 plot, we would of course expect to see some CD3 positive T cells, some CD19 positive B cells, but we wouldn't expect to see any double positive cells, um, which is great. We don't see that here. And we can also assess any spreading error that we see, such as here where um, CD4 is spreading into CD8. Um, and we need to just make sure that we can clearly resolve the populations that we're looking for. We also want to make sure we can clearly resolve any readout markers, um, such as this tetramer here we have on NKT cells. We want to make sure that they are clearly resolved from the negative and that we can use them for the required analysis. Once we're happy with our gating strategy, the next thing we need to do is a dimensionality reduction algorithm. So the easiest one to do here in Flojo is TISNI. So we just go up to workspace and we find the TISNI here. We then select the parameters that we want to run and we want to make sure that we're only selecting the population that we're interested in. So of course we did all of that cleaning earlier, which means we want to actually take our nice clean population. So we took our time gate, our singlets, our live cells, our cells of interest, and I've mentioned that this is a panel for T cells, so we're also going to go from our, the level of our CD3 positive T cells. So we want to run the TISNI on this population, and I've selected the correct one here. Then we select the parameters that we want to use for our analysis, and obviously we don't want to select any parameters that we've already gated on previously, such as our viability die, 
and the CD19 and CD3 parameters, which we used to gate on our cells of interest, which is our T cells. Okay. Now we're going to run the TISNI with basic parameters. So once your TISNI is run, you just open your sample and plot the two TISNI parameters on X versus Y. And then we can color our axis based on different the different floors in our panel and make sure all of our markers co-localize in places that we would expect. So if we were to color based on CD4, we can see that this large island here is very positive for CD4. And if we change this to CD8, we wouldn't expect co-localization, which is exactly what we see. And you just go through and iterate through different combinations of markers to make sure that they are co-localizing exactly where you'd expect them to or not co-localizing where you wouldn't expect them to. In this way you can QC your panel.